Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm talking about Luminar AI Update 3. It's just out today. It's a free update for those of you that already own Luminar AI. If you don't own it yet, get it at the link down below. Note that is an affiliate link, which means if you purchase off that, I get a small commission for sending traffic over Skyloom's way. It's no additional cost to you. And in fact, you can use my code JimNix to save $10. Now, having said that, I want to talk about all the new stuff that's in Luminar AI Update 3. There are some things that I can't demo here. So for example, there's faster performance. There's some bugs that have been squashed. There's things like that. There's also native support for an M1 Mac if you're running that chipset. I'm not, but that's available, which is great. And there are some other things I want to show you. So let me just hop into it. I've got a photo here. I'm going to go to templates first. And one thing that's new here is if you go to purchased templates, if there are template packs that you've purchased from the marketplace in the past, they were all just kind of listed down with each individual template. Now they're grouped with a visual browse. I've only got one that I've purchased, but there it is. And then you could see other ones. If you had purchased them, they would be listed right there. So that visual browse is a nice little addition. Another thing that's new is in Dodge and Burn, you now have a softness slider. So you can adjust the softness of any lightening or darkening that you're doing in your photo to get a better overall blend. Nice little addition, super helpful. Augmented Sky has been enhanced as well in object selection. You click on that and you can see you now have visual browse. So if I wanted to add some mountains to this scene from Rome, which don't make sense, but hey, I just stuck mountains in there. They will, uh, you know, you get the visual browse, but I wanted to point out, if you probably noticed this, they're not being reflected. So these augmented sky additions do not automatically reflect. As you can see, I stuck that hot air balloon in there, not reflecting. So just keep that in mind, visual browse, but not reflected. Now, the big fun part of this update is the updates that have come to Sky AI. I've actually got a pretty nice sky on this sunset from Rome. I'm going to put a new one in anyway, just because it's fun. And I want to demonstrate the adjustments to how you can better control reflections. And that's something I wanted to point out. Skyloom has been listening to us. There's been a lot of feedback since they first came out with the re automatic reflections with sky replacement. And one of the key things was, hey, you know, we can't really control the reflection. It just kind of goes in and then we're kind of stuck. Now you got better control. I want to show you how that works. So go ahead and click sky selection. I'm going to grab a sky here and I'm going to grab this sky from the Desert Sunset Collection. My friend Matt Sue sells on his website. There is a link down below, also an affiliate link. Matt pays me a small commission if you purchase anything from him. So just FYI, but uh, your cost is the same, by the way. Anyway, so I've put this new sunset on top of that uh, existing sky. You can see that the reflections are showing up automatically. You also may notice that it's automatically relighting the water as well as the sky and the overall scene. So there it is. So if I go in and choose a different sky, let me turn that back on. If I choose a night sky, for example, look at that, it's getting completely relit. If I choose this sky, completely relit. So I just wanted to point that out that this relighting is coming in automatically and it includes the reflections, which is really nice. Okay, we're back to this sky. Now, you may notice sky orientation and horizon position. Position and orientation have been broken, broken out, giving you better control over how that reflection is being displayed in your photo. Let me show you. I'm generally starting with horizon position. And so you have this shift slider and that allows you to move the horizon up or down. So it basically allows you to figure out where's the horizon going to be. And so I'm going to go ahead and just choose that, for example. And let's say I'm happy with that as my horizon. Now I'm going up to sky orientation and you have this slider called vertical position. And by the way, you probably noticed when I move this, the slider or excuse me, the sky is just sliding down in the photo, right? But the nice thing is when you get to the sky orientation and, and move vertical position, you will see that the sky and the reflection are going to move in opposite directions. So they are actually mirrored, as you can see kind of happening here. So I'm going to move that down where it's a little bit bluer and that's giving you better control. So they've basically built better sky detection for where it places automatically, but then also better positioning and better control that you have. The other thing they've done is taken their 3D depth mapping technology from their Atmosphere AI tool and applied that to reflections, giving you further control, which I'm going to show you here in a second. So now I've got my sky in. I think it blended just honestly like perfectly. It's reflected nice. I've got the horizon and the vertical position totally set. 
you remember horizon or horizontal position, I can still move this around and you can see that the sky is moving kind of in concert with that. Um, excuse me, the sky reflection is moving in concert with that. I'm going to go ahead and reposition that back at zero. I'm fine where I had it. So that's new stuff. Shift and position are separate, giving you better fine control over that sky placement and that sky reflection. Now mask refinement is the same. I'm not going to go into that, but I do want to go into scene relighting. As I showed you, it relights the scene automatically when you add the new sky, which I think is fabulous. You can come in here and do a relight strength if you want to, or a relight saturation. I don't think I'm going to do anything there. I'm just going to reset both of those, but those still exist. And of course, relight human. No humans here, so I don't have to worry about it. But already, I mean, really, I just think the light, this, the scenery lighting, and the placement and the reflection are looking fantastic. And honestly, I didn't even need to replace that sky because I love that sky. But that looks pretty fantastic, my friends. I just think it's looking really well. Now, a couple of other things. These next two sections are key for adding reflections and refining them even further. This reflection section, as you know, you can increase or decrease reflection amount. I'm going to go a little bit higher, which as you can see is brightening that, but there's now a water blur slider. And so as I drag that to the right, you can see I'm blurring the water. But the cool thing is if you look at the reflection of that bridge, it's not blurring. It's literally blurring mostly the water where the sky is. So that allows me to go in here where I have this defocus slider and adjust that sky and basically mirror the lack of focus, for lack of a better word, or the blur or the defocusing, whatever you want to call it, in the sky reflection and the sky so that they better match. And yet I still got a nice crisp reflection on that bridge, which I like. I just wanted both the sky um, and the sky reflection in the water to be a little bit more defocused. I think that's pretty awesome. Now defocus here affects just the sky as does grain. You, you know, you might have a situation where you need to add a little bit of grain back to the sky to get it to match your current foreground. But these next three sliders, here's another innovation, which is fantastic. Atmospheric haze, warmth, and brightness, they impact both the sky and the water reflection now of that sky. So I don't need any haze here, but warmth, if I drag this to the right, you'll see the reflection getting warmer as well. And if I go to the left, you will see it getting cooler and brightness, same kind of thing. If I go to the left, both are getting darker and the relighting seems to be adjusting as well. And if I go to the right, it's getting brighter. So I think that's fantastic. And those are the major innovations in Luminar AI Update 3, primarily around Sky AI, giving us this better control over the reflections. I think it's working fantastic. I've done a lot of tests in different photos. I will say there's a few instances when I've not had a perfect reflection in other words, it doesn't perfectly recognize every single sky every time, but I would say the tool is better. They're listening to us. If you've got feedback about skies not fitting or working properly and being reflected properly, please do send that to Skyloom. They're listening. They're trying to get this tool better and better and better. And honestly, I think it's light years ahead of anything else out there like, you know, <clears throat> Photoshop where you don't even get a reflection. So I'm pretty fired up. I'm having a good time. I hope this is an insightful and useful video for you. And that's what I wanted to cover, my friends. Just a quick update on Luminar AI Update 3. Again, get it at the link below if you'd like to. Otherwise, leave a comment, like, subscribe, all those kind of things. And I'll see you in the next video, my friends. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming by. It really means a lot. Hope you guys are taking care of yourselves. I'll see you really soon. And adios.